to the second in the Fukushima Fallout Awareness Network's educational teleconference series. And I'm Mary Beth Brangan, co-director of E.ON, the Ecological Options Network, and a founding member, along with Beyond Nuclear and Citizens for Health, of the Fukushima Fallout Awareness Network, FAN. And it's been a whirlwind week building up to this year's Becquerel Awareness Day, April 10th, BAD. <laughs> and um, on behalf of the FAN Coalition, I want to thank everyone who's been calling Senator Wyden and the White House to demand blocking of the fast track of the Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Agreement and for signing our new petition. We have um, close to 800 signatures now and we'd like many more. So please help spread the word about that petition and Kim will uh, give you more information about that at the end. And welcome to all of you who are joining us on this call today, April 11th, 2015. Um, focusing on stop fast track of TPP and saying no to radioactive food from Japan or from anywhere else, I might add. Uh, we'll hear today from James Turner, Cindy Folkers, Adam Wiseman, and then we'll open the discussion up to callers. And Kimberly Roberson, the executive director of FAN, will end our presentation today. So first, I'll give a brief overview of the current situation in Japan, though I know that many of you on this call probably are very up-to-date. Um, and this look at the ongoing Fukushima catastrophe shows why our organization, E.ON, is working to close down our own potential Fukushimas here in the U.S. Uh, the new FAN petition features an extraordinary link to the new Fukushima Daiichi decommissioner who recently stated on NHK TV, the Japanese PBS, that the solution to dealing with the immense radioactivity from the three melted down reactor cores still needs to be invented. And he's hoping for international help and doesn't uh, he's very unsure whether he's going to be able to make the current deadlines set by the Japanese um, government for decommissioning. There are parts of the nuclear plant that are emitting so much radiation that a few minutes exposure is lethal. Hundreds of tons of highly radioactive water pours daily into the Pacific Ocean and billions of becquerels of radioactivity goes into the air daily that continually contaminates the biosphere. And radioactive fallout from Fukushima has already contaminated a large part of Japan, including Tokyo. Both in the U.S. and in Japan, though, there is official silence on the dangers to food supplies and also attempts to cover up. And Nancy Faust of Simply Info, the Fukushima Project, states in an April 7th, 2015 fan press release, quote, Taiwan recently found a rash of purposely mislabeled food imports from Japan. The items had different prefecture of origin labels than where the food was actually produced. And Taiwan and China currently have higher standards for food importation than the U.S. China has not only banned all food imported from the 10 Japanese prefectures they consider high risk, but they also require a radiation detection report and a government-issued place of origin for food certificate for items from other areas of Japan. Ms. Faust also says, quote, spot checks in Hong Kong also recently found contaminated green tea imported from Japan. Currently, China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan 
all have better oversight of imported foods related to Fukushima contamination than the U.S. does. Thank you.